Hey there, thank you for joining me. In this video series, we are going to explore creating a drought map. And in part one of that series, we'll look at finding data, downloading it, and uh, grouping it all together for analysis. So let's get started. This is the United States Drought Monitor. It's actually an amazing resource. Uh, and it gives you week by week summaries of the instances of drought that have happened all across the United States. And it categorizes them from um, abnormally dry conditions, which is actually rated as a zero, all the way up to four, which is insane, intense, uh, unbelievable drought. Um, and they've got everything in between. And each one of those is a polygon, a non overlapping polygon, and it covers the United States. And they do this for every week of the year going back many, many years. And it's just this remarkable resource for folks. What I like best about it is how generous they are with the formats and the mechanisms that they share their data in. So here are uh, those weeks of data uh, made available for each year. And you can download the whole year in one big chunk. They let you download it in all sorts of formats. I'm gonna download every week's shapefile. So this is gonna be 52 zip files all inside one single parent zip file and there they are so in my downloads folder i've got this zip and i've got 52 zip files inside that now unzipping all of those individually would be a chore so i like to use something called 7zip an open source tool that lets me uh really quickly um down or uh, extract all of those zip files in one sort of batch operation instead of doing it 52 individual times, which nobody really wants to do. So here is my data folder, and here's my um, zip folder. I'm gonna drag all those zip files into my data folder, and now it's time to unpack all of those in kind of this blanket awesome seven zip uh, go. So if I right click, I can choose seven zip, and I'll just extract the files, and I'll choose my, my download or my, my data folder here. Data, if my data folder ever goes down, I am toast. I'm just gonna have to retire. So there it is. I've just extracted all those files and there they are. So each, each week though is in a folder and that can be kind of cumbersome too because now I have to, what, uh, copy every folder content inside one parent file where they're you know, just in a flat location? Well, no, I'll show you a quick hack that I figured out. So. If you uh, just do, well, first let me look inside this folder and see what data is in there. Okay, so it's got all these shapefile things in there. But they're all prefixed with the name USDM for US Drop Monitor. And we can use that. So I'm gonna create a new folder where I'm gonna dump all of my flat files. I'll just name it, you know, shapefiles. And using, this is sneaky, using the search in Windows, I'll just say search for everything named USDM. USDM, let it go, and there it is. Now it's kind of showing me everything inside all of those child folders in a flat list, which means I can, in a really sneaky fashion, just grab everything from all of those child folders and select them and drag them into one folder where they're all just sitting there in a flat list. Isn't that great? Super easy. All right, so. Let's fire up ArcGIS Pro now. I've got all of my folders in a flat file. So here's ArcGIS Pro. Here are my folders. I will actually drag and drop all of the shapefiles in. So I'm gonna sort this by file type so I can find the shapefiles. And if I were smart, I would just do a search for SHP, but I'm not, I'm lazy. So I'll just drag down and choose SHP, the first in the list, scroll down until I see the last shape file in the list, there it is, and there they are, all 52, good, ready to rock, let's drag them in, and here they are, here they are, here they are, oh, and they're rendering behind my pesky base map, so let me get rid of those. Okay, so now I've got 52 shape files all sitting in a row, neatly in a row, um, but that's not terribly neat, so let's take a look at what's inside each one. So each one consists of five layers, you know, ranked zero through four, and they're all multi-part polygons that don't overlap each other per week. Um, and the thing is, I've got 52 weeks of those, so there actually is a ton of overlapping happening between weeks. Um, what do you do about something like this? 
Well, um, what we need to do is smash all 52 of these shapefiles into a single geodatabase. It's going to be a lot faster, and we can start doing analysis on it now that you know they'll all be in one file. So I'm going to open up the merge tool, and I'm just going to say select all of these guys, add them to this list of inputs, scroll down, and because they're all the same attribute, you know it's 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 easy. I don't have to do any kind of fiddling with that. So I'll just name it my new file. I'll call it uh, 2018 Drought. And looks good. Let's hit run. Oh, we got an error. So let's see what the deal is. Okay, uh, doesn't my bad. It, it can't start with a number. So here I'll just call it Drought 2018 instead of 2018 Drought. No problem. I'll hit run and let this think. Now it's taking all 52 individual shape files and smashing them into a single file in my geo database. And I'll hit Control Click to turn everything off. Quick tip and then turn on my one geo database that has all my drought layers in it. Now you can see them drawing in on top of each other. There's clearly a real problem with occlusion. How do we make sense of this visually? Like as, as a scientist, how do you make sense of all this overlapping data? Well, um, let's play with outlines and we'll play with opacities just to get a sense for how much stuff we're working with. So I've changed the background color to black just because it kind of looks better that way and I'll give uh, it no fill. I'll just give it a white outline and see what's going on. Okay, so there's a lot of busyness happening you know, around Texas. Um, what's going on there? Well, I, I can't get a sense for where things are overlapping a lot. Really, that's just a sense for where they've moved over the 52 weeks. So instead of just a solid white stroke, let's give it a 95% transparent stroke. So, or I mean fill, so it's only, um, it's only 5% opaque. But see how they all stack up on top of each other? Now this gives you kind of a sense for where the drought action is really happening. And you can play with seeing little segments of your data. So I'm going to do um, a definition query now to say, only show me the most extreme drought. And that's kind of cool. So category 4 drought. And I can just get rid of that. So have fun with that tool. And I'll bring them all back again. Um, now that the outline view was kind of interesting to me, um, but but let's play with color first. So they were all white, semi-transparent, sitting on top of each other. Let's make them color coded by how severe the drought was. And by default, I've got this yellow to red ramp, which actually isn't too bad. Um, as much as I hate defaults, this is actually a pretty smart default. Um, so let's go yellow to like this neat kind of bright, hot cyan, nice and dry, uh, not cyan, magenta. And again, I'm going to make it 95% transparent to 95% transparent. Now we've got some stacking happening, um, but those outlines are getting in the way a little bit. So I'm going to format all the symbols and just give a blanket, no color to the stroke. Well, that's kind of cool. You can see um, based on color where it's worse to better and then um, based on opacity how frequently it happens in a place but you've got a little bit of a problem because the weaker areas are drawing on top of the stronger areas so i'm doing symbol layer drawing now and saying show the highest drought on top and show the weakest drought on the bottom so that the weak drought isn't really biasing the overall visualization which is kind of helpful so now you can see, all right, there's a lot of drought happening in the New Mexico area. And it's not just a lot of drought, it's a lot of really bad drought, you know, level four drought. Um, so thinking again about those outlines, so instead of using uh, fill as our color scheme, let's, let's use outlines as our color scheme. So I'll choose to um, only color code the outlines, which is kind of a neat feature, and hit apply. Now something interesting happens here. Uh, it's almost like this bivariate map I'm getting almost accidentally. So I'm using color to denote drought severity per week, but I'm also using opacity to show uh, where it's parked, right? So if it's really opaque, then you know that that drought has just been sitting there week after week after week, and its opacity builds up to full intensity. Now, just because I'm uptight about this kind of thing, I'm going to change the projection to Elber's equal area conic, which 
is so much easier on the eyes and more appropriate for a visualization like this. Um, so yeah, there you go. This has been a lot of fun. We've been doing some data wrangling. This was part one. And uh, what we covered was finding data, downloading data, extracting a ton of zip files into a big list of folders, and then using a Windows hack to take those folders and extract their content into a flat set of files. And then we played with a couple different visualization uh, methods to understand our data a little bit better, introduce ourselves to that data. And that's it. Thank you for joining me. Stay tuned for part two, where we'll get into analysis and visualization. And uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you've got a question, leave a question in the comments section or recommend a map that I've made that you'd like to see demonstrated here. And feel free to give me a follow on Twitter or Instagram. Stay tuned on crazy stuff that I'm up to. And in general, have a great day. Happy mapping.